to uh, our caregiver support group meeting, uh, which takes place at uh, Roseview Manor. And uh, this is our third meeting. I will talk with you a little bit about advocacy because that's something you're all very good at. And uh, when, I, when I looked up the term advocacy, advocacy is about advancing uh, and protecting the rights of people. And when I think of this population, it's more about advancing and protecting the rights of people who no longer have a voice or can articulate their thoughts and their feelings. And um, um, that's what you do. That's what you do every day. That's what you do at the bedside. You know, um, that's what you do by your presence. And uh, that's what you do by uh, you know, raising uh, certain things with staff over your loved one's needs and their comfort. And um, we know... You really want to talk about uh, advocacy? Yes. Uh, I've, uh, I've, for the longest time, I've had this, this bone to pick with the, with the company. Uh, you try and play act with the company. What it is that you bring your loved one here. And see the booklets and the, and the, and the information that they are going to give you. Now you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. And, and of course, the loved one sits there and doesn't participate because the loved one is, is, is ill. Mm -hmm. uh, there are all kinds of stuff, so then all of a sudden you end up with a, with a booklet like this, with all kinds of information that you receive about how to act and behave and this and that. And, that. and that, that's very helpful, obviously. The difficulty that I find is that then you go home, it goes in the cupboard, you don't see it anymore. You, and you don't read it anymore, you don't play with it anymore, you don't you don't interact anymore with it and so that that's where it stays and it carries dust for a moment. And I've asked on several occasions and it and it never happened, really. I've asked on several occasions, will you please bring those books out because those books tell me what my duties are for the most part. Mm -hmm. They do not talk to me about their rights that we have. And so you have here uh, one of the one of the sheets that we received here is, is the rights of your of your caregiver, of the, of you as a caregiver, what your rights are. Mm -hmm. Right? And you we have that there. Uh, these things need to be these things need to be repeated once a year, once every six months or whatever the case may be. So in other words, they are very good in laying down these are the things that you're supposed to be doing because, and I'll give you one example, for instance. Uh, you are going to pay us $1,400, $1,500, $1,800 a, a month mm -hmm. because that is to, for, the, for the care of that, of that person. Is that okay? And the answer is yes, it's okay because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Now I can make, I can make it easy for you for the very simple reason. The only thing you have to do is put your signature here and once a month I can go into the bank and take $1,400, $1,500, $1,600 out of your bank account. You don't have to worry about it, you don't forget. I know that the aggravation of having to chase you and so forth. So we're, we're, you give me the signature and I have the authorization not to go to the bank and, and do that once a month. And that's okay. I've done that. But you see, the thing is that there is also a section in the book that we have, that I have, is uh, what are the rules and regulations, what are we entitled to? Because we are talking here about a, a financial transaction, and I pay X number of dollars, for the X number of dollars I get Y certain uh, things that I can count on. And that is something that is never talked about. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, that, that's a very grave uh, difficulty with, uh, with, 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 with us here. Well, so in other words, by all means, bring it up forward when you're going to the management. I would think 
each facility has something called the Resident Bill of Rights or... Um, yeah, or the Family Council. But almost all places that provide care, well, all places that provide care have like a mission statement, a statement of values, and, uh, you know, um, it's outlined in, in that and what, what, I'm about. what we they have need to, to be staying. What we they have need to be delivering. Mm -hmm. But you see, when we when we start talking about the fact that uh, that we we get to hear continuously on a continuous basis, oh, we were short staffed again. Mm -hmm. All right. If we get if if they tell us if we hear by the by the grave friend that that oh we are short staffed again, it's not. They are talking about the fact that they are running their, their buns off in order to get the work done because mm -hmm. they are short staffed. Yes. What does that mean as far as we are concerned? Mm -hmm. You see, and so therefore, if I pay the $1,000 per month, then I expect a full complement of staff to be there mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. And if they are saying on a regular basis that, that, that they are short staffed, mm -hmm. then on a regular basis we are, we are being short -changed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Well, Peter. And so you're not going to solve that because you're, no. you're, you're, you don't own the place. But. No, and uh, but that's not just the way here. But that you know that is that's kind of systemic because it's a you know it's we're human beings and it's you know we're not without our faults. That's for sure. And you have people who are off sick or you know those kinds of issues as well but I am encouraged because you know I am being invited to a meeting tomorrow to talk about you know some of the you know some of the staff needs for education and that I you're, think you're is a being very invited here? yeah okay and so that is that is yeah. a very good hey, listen, step. but here that's five years now in the, in the making Mm -hmm. And the five years that we have been complaining about the fact that this wasn't happening. So, in other words, that wasn't that which wasn't happening. What wasn't happening? That education and oh, that that. Okay. I mean, how long have we been asked these fellows here? How long have we been asking for for education, for 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 yourselves? Sure. Like and everybody this. else. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now here you are. Mm -hmm. But that's again here. That is because of what somebody from the family council did, mm -hmm. that you're here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been here. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was again here because somebody wrote a letter to the, to the editor and said, Yes. And so yes. here you are. And so well, that's, that's kind of grassroots advocacy that you did. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's what I would call grassroots advocacy. But it also tells me, Peter, that we need to make some system improvements. For instance, myself, um, there are people that I could have referred you to had I known there were these issues. So it tells me that there needs to be maybe a more coordinated system-wide approach to, you know, maybe getting information to family councils or not all family councils may want to participate in the caregiver support group, but at least they have the information, <coughs> and then they can make an informed decision as to yes, they would like this type of you know educational format, or no, they don't, um, because we don't force people to do things they don't want to do. But so, I don't think it's just um, um, a, a problem with uh, within organization. It's I think it's something we. Can Need, needs to be looked at system wide, you know, that we could all be doing a better job rather than working in silos. We need to be working across, you know, across gaps.